As who does what.tv filmed Golf Air spanking new first Dreamliner as it touches down in Bahrain, one wonders why they chose a Boeing 787 over, say, an Airbus A350 for commonality, etc. Then again, the mind boggles at the competition between mobile phone makers, never mind airplanes. Has technology stifled and innovation crumpled? To the uninitiated, all passenger jets look much the same these days, and sometimes even to the enthusiast, it's hard to tell them apart as they fly over. To the plane spotter, there is one smallish, very good-looking regional jet that does look that little bit different. But you can't quite put your finger on it until you discover it's Russian and made by Sukhoi, who you think only make fighter jets along with MiGs. In fact, with that nose, it does look like a mini Dreamliner. We're talking about the Sukhoi Superjet 100. Shown here in Bahrain is one of Mexico's interjet planes, who themselves are rumored to have financial problems, so cannot afford spares, but appear to claim no spares are available, so are cannibalizing their Superjet fleet, as with Cityjet. So what's happening with this fabulous piece of engineering in what must be the fiercest competition sector ever? Stagnant in sales, but still pushing, it seems. Here, we revisit Superjet 100. Italian aviation stalwarts Leonardo, they teamed up with Sukhoi to create Superjet International, and that's led by CEO Nazario Cuccellia, a rather straight-talking flyer himself. Superjet International is a Russian-Italian company. We are based in Venice. Um, I can tell you that myself and my team are very proud to be part of this partnership. Uh, because uh, this is a challenging uh, program, but we are convinced that uh, it's a great product, what we are offering to the market. And uh, we will play our chance in this uh, challenging competition of a uh, regional jet. Uh, Superjet International Mission, our contribute to the program is uh, we are responsible of our customer support for the worldwide fleet. We have also the responsibility of marketing and sale of the aircraft on the Western market. And the last but not least, we act as a completion and delivery center for the Western market. Now, we all know Russia makes tanks disguised as airplanes, and they're not the most sophisticated of machines overall, but they do keep going and going and going. But few were ever sold outside of what was the Soviet Union. Noisy, dirty engines, rivets that rattle and so on. But never underestimate the Russians, for they can fly, and fly very well indeed. Oh, you are right. It's, uh, this is our challenge, but first of all, one of the messages that we try to give to the market is that this is not a Russian aircraft, this is an international product. Because uh, it's true that the aircraft is designed by Russian, and everybody knows about the Russian reputation in the aircraft design. I think that uh, the Russian history on uh, aircraft design is unique. So there is no doubt about the Russian capability to design the aircraft. But for what concerns the rest, <coughs> I mean uh, systems, well, what I can tell you is that more than 60% of this airplane comes from Western technology. You know, if you see the list of a system manufacturer, system supplier of this aircraft, you can easily see that uh, all the most famous names of Western system technology designed to invest on this product. So it's a mistake to say that it's a Russian product. It's an international product that combines the Russian uh, background and reputation in the aerodynamic design with the Western state of art of technology. Almost two years on from its appearance in Bahrain, which was obviously a tactical display at that, since it would seem so logical that this cheaper than the Embraer or Bombardier equivalents would be perfect for intergolf regional operation. Unfortunately, not so attractive, obviously. Even Gulf Air got rid of its leased Embraer's 170s, no sooner than they got them, it would appear, and Saudia is rumored to have mothballed theirs, but we do see them coming and going sometimes. So, a Superjet 130 with 93 passengers, nice seat pitch, might not just be attractive here to the airlines, but for passengers, it's lovely doubly. Our uh, Western lunch customer is the Mexican airline uh, Interjet. Uh, 
the original contract with Interjet was for 15 aircraft. Uh, one year after the first delivery, they decided to exercise the five options, so they increased the number of airplanes from 15 to 20. And then one year after, they decided to increase 10 more options, and they increased from up to 30 airplanes. So today we have a firm orders by them for 30 aircraft. Uh, these aircraft in particular, Interjet, they uh, selected a low density configuration. So we have uh, only 93 seats on these airplanes with a huge beach, 34 inch. So the level of comfort, of comfort is very, very high because uh, all the people, they like the airplane very much. And uh, uh, consider that Interjet, they have a mixed fleet of uh, Airbus A320 and Superjet 100, you know? And they said that uh, in their opinion, Superjet 100 is the best solution, the best platform to complement narrow body in a mixed fleet. You know, because uh, the commonality, be, uh, because the level of comfort, because the cockpit architecture, uh, the pilot that come to Venice for training, because we have a training center in Venice, and so we have a trainer, the, all the Russian pilot, uh, Mexican pilot, most of them come from Airbus A320, mm -hmm. and all of them made the same comment. The transition time from Airbus A320 to Superjet 100 is extremely fast. It's extremely fast because of the commonality of the cockpit that we have. For the Anoraks out there, there is actually a slightly large Superjet 130 planned to compete with the Airbus A319 and smaller Boeing 737s. We are very happy and proud about this, not only because we are entering the European market, because, but because uh, we are uh, sure that uh, Superjet 100 uh, flying uh, in Europe will create a lot of interest. In all the Western market, not just uh, in Europe, there is a lot of uh, uh, the success that we have got in these uh, last uh, 20 years is uh, to create a lot of interest and curiosity on the market about Superjet 100, you know? And uh, people keep asking a lot about it. When they come, you know, when we make interview, when we go to the air show, everybody wants to know more about this. And I'm sure that this level of interest will dramatically increase once we will start to operate the aircraft in Europe. Currently, it uses the power jet SAM-146, which is a French Snecma and NPO Saturn of Russia joint venture. This engine of choice is based on the widely used CFM-56. Other engines are optional. Again, the uh, engine, most of the technology of the engine comes from Safran, well-known Safran, which means from the CFM family, from a leap engine. And uh, uh, as I said before, I had the chance to visit uh, Villa Roche plant where the gas generator of this engine is uh, produced and assembled and I was really impressed by the level of technology that I have seen. I, I'm sure that the engine is one of the major uh, value of this, uh, of this aircraft. Brexit apart, joint ventures in Europe have flourished. The Airbus is a real Heinz 57 variety when all is said and done. So why doesn't a joint venture between a Russian and as termed Western consortium want to work? The Superjet International Consortium seems even more fragile now, as in 2016, Leonardo reduced its share capital to just 10%, as reported by Bloomberg. As Sukhoi brandished the bigger brother Superjet 130 with winglets, which allows for shorter runways, such as City Airport in London, and fuel savings. Plus, they're making a chop-down business jet version. So it seems like death throes for the Superjet 100 sales, of which, despite its brilliance as an airplane, has been plagued, if not jinxed, with logistical, technical, political and psychological don't-buy-Russian sentiment. Pitched to compete with Embraer E-Series and the Bombardier CRJs, it is also a sort of replacement for the old workhorse Tupolev Tu-134, which the world just can't seem to get rid of. We are convinced that we can play our chance on the market with this product. We are conscious that the competition is fierce, is challenging, but it's fair. 
It's competition that has been dominated by, for many years by two historical players. Now the, the business model is changing. You know, newcomers on board, we are one of them. We have been the first one because we are the only one in service today. And so we will, uh, we will pay our chance. And uh, we feel confident that we'll give to this baby the space of the market that uh, it deserves. The Superjet 100 was the big time Russian comeback and soiree into the world market. But a quick history lesson is in order here. The jet was briefly grounded a good while back because the Russian Air Transport Authority found tail wing cracks. Kudos to them. All was fixed pretty quickly. Now 10 years in the making and without doubt a fine piece of engineering it is. And it's disastrous first international marketing flight and a highly unfair fate wise at that in May 2012. One can speculate that because of this accident outside of Russia few have been sold to date. But it really was no fault of the jet. Quite the opposite. But in the Soviet era, we frequently heard of Russian jets experiencing a sudden twang as they made their premature descents into terrain. The joke was, how do you get a tuple of 134 or 154? Well, you just buy a plot of land and wait. No fault of the Superjet 100. It was in Indonesia on a sales trip with buyers excitedly taking a pre-sales flight. And the pilots were unfamiliar with high ground in the area and really cannot be excused for that. Chatting away, the Superjet terrain warning was sounding, but ironically the pilots thought this was a malfunction. Make what you will of the trust. All 45 people on board were killed and the Superjet 100 tarnished from the start. You've obviously invited certain people, important people with the with the bickies, to buy this airplane. But what about sort of people just walking by? Are you getting a big interest in this? People are like, I'm really interested. Look, at I saw it. I thought, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm getting big. Uh, we are getting a big interest. So what about delivery times? I mean, someone walks in now and says, I like this. That's good. We've been looking for a regional jet. And I actually, we're going to configure it into a business jet because it's, it's perfect for both, really. So how what's the delivery time on one of these now if they've been making them since 2011? Well, I can tell you that uh, today, you know, it's uh, if we can get uh, contract one year before, we are able to provide uh, to deliver the aircraft one year later, or even even earlier if it's strictly necessary, you know. But this is more or less our uh, lead time, 12, uh, 18 months. Big expectations. Well, Nazario, thank you very much indeed for that insight. We're going to have a look around the airplane now, and I wish you all the best with this one. It's a very nice looking plane, I have to say. Okay, it's, uh, it was my pleasure. You are uh, very welcome to visit the airplane, and you are very welcome to come to Venice and visit us, uh, our company anytime. That's a nice little invitation there. You witness it, right? I'm on the UAC stand, Sukhoi, and we're going to Venice. Right, thank you very much indeed. Okay.